Hi everybody. In this lesson, we're going to create our very first Java application. It's going to be very small and it's Hello World, which is typically uh, the application that most languages start you off with. Uh, and so we're going to follow suit here with Hello World. And don't worry about the Java specifics here. Uh, the point of this exercise is really just about creating the file, compiling it, and run it. We are, um, we'll get into the specifics later. I'll describe some as we go, but really the focus is on um, creating the file, compiling it, and running it. So here we go. All right, so let's open up our Visual Studio Code editor that we downloaded in how to set up a Java development environment previously. So I'll just click to open it, and it typically starts off with a welcome tab. Uh, it might not if you told it not to do that, uh, but new files an option here, also command N on uh, Mac, and I believe it's control N on Windows will create a new file, or there's also the file menu up above as most applications have. So file, new file would create a new file. So let's go ahead. I'm going to do command N. I'm on a Mac and that gave me a new file. I'm going to close this welcome. And so I've got entitled, untitled uh, dash one here. So I want to name it something else. And if I type the word that I want here and it's hello world dot Java, and that's the source file. So let's flip back to the lessons plan because uh, I jumped ahead a little bit. Um, how to run this Java application down here to run this Java application, open Visual Studio Code, which we did, and create a new file named hello world.java uh, with the content above. So that's what we're doing right now. So if I type the first thing here and I hit Command S to save it or Control S if I'm on Windows, it'll go ahead and pop up with the words that I typed here. So it's just a little uh, shortcut to getting us. Otherwise, I have to navigate and um, type in the name here. So it's just easier to do it there. So that's just a little trick that I do. Uh, save, and then it's going to want to replace it because I already tried to do this before. So let's go ahead and replace. Your, your um, dialog won't say that you had it before unless you did try it and you're trying it again. Okay, so now we don't need this. So I just uh, highlighted it all and deleted. So let's go back to the instructions for the lesson. And we did the first one. So the next one is to open a terminal window in the folder we saved, the Hello World Java source file. And we're not at that step yet because we actually need to put the contents above in um, our file, which we did not do yet. So let's go ahead and do a line by line. I want you to type, not copy and paste, because we're going to build muscle memory on these Java keywords and get used to uh, how things are formatted. And your fingers are just do the uh, typing for you in some cases once you get good at uh, building that muscle memory. So public class hello world defines this class. Hello world uppercase H uppercase W is the name of this class. And we're going to go ahead and type that out. So public class hello world. All right, and that ended with a curly bracket. And you'll notice here that the editor helped finish uh, the bracket with the end bracket and this ends up making our class body. So in between these brackets is called the class body and the class is called hello world. Java classes typically have uppercase uh, letters for the uh, words so you, they're readable. All right, so what's the next line to type out? Our next line is public static void main and that's where uh, Java applications typically start off. That's the entry point. When you run the application, it starts off and comes in here and then it starts running the application. So public static void main is the first thing we're going to type. So let's do that. And you'll notice that the editor is helping us because we installed the Java extension pack before. So that's public static void main. And this has to be called this uh, with these uh, words here so that it actually executes properly. And the next thing is open a parenthesis. So these are where our parameters come in. Parameters are arguments that we pass in that can be used within this uh, function body. Um, and we're going to start off with a string um, array. And so this is the class string and then uh, square brackets to start off an array. So let's go ahead and type off, type out that. So we have a parenthesis and it finished the end parenthesis for us and uppercase S for string and then two square brackets. And that made a string array. You can put a size in here, but because we don't know what this is going to be and we're not actually decline, de declaring it for our use, we're actually taking it in that came in from the uh, environment. So we're just going to leave it like that, empty. And args is what it's called. 
for the variable name. We can call this anything we want to, but typically it's called args. And then we're going to go ahead and start off a function body with a curly bracket, and the editor will finish that off for us. All right, so what's the next line? The next line is system, which is a built-in uh, Java class. And then when you want to call or access a member of a class, you're going to use a, a dot or a period um, to, in, to point that you want one of those things. And then uh, you can do that again, since this one's a property. We're going to go ahead and do another dot to call a function. So let's do system.out.println, and then we'll get into this part after. So system. And you'll notice it helped us. So here, I could stop typing and actually just hit Enter. And it would uh, get that for us, because it's noticing that this is the Java um, system class that we want in the java.lang package, which we'll learn about later. So I'm going to keep typing, though, because I'm trying to learn how to get my muscle memory. So system.out. All right, and so you'll notice that the editor is showing, helping us again. At least we're getting confirmation that we're typing it right. So then we do out and then print line. OK, and so that's that. And let's go ahead and flip over to the instructions again. And we're going to open a parenthesis and then type in quotes. So double quotes is a string literal in Java. And we'll learn more about that later. So we're going to type in hello world in double quotes and then close with a parenthesis. So let's do that. So open parenthesis, open double quote, hello world. And exclamation point was what it said there. And then all Java statements end with a uh, semicolon, or at least most of them do. So we'll put a semicolon there. And you notice that if it's not there, it shows up kind of uh, curly with red underneath it. And that's showing us that there was something wrong. OK, so now. Get in the habit of hitting uh, save. So I command S is almost something I'll automatically do. So that's what I do. After I type out a line or something that I'm happy with, I'll hit command S. So if anything happens, um, I accidentally destroy and paste over all of my typing. Uh, it won't all be gone because the file saved. Or if the editor should crash, which doesn't happen very often, but it used to in the old days. All right, so we've got that all done. So let's go ahead and flip back to our application. And it looks finished to me. So then what's the next instruction, which we read before? So we're going to open a terminal window in the folder we saved the file in. And let's do that next. So I'm going to open up a terminal window. And I'm in my home folder, which is where I believe I saved that file. So if I ls, it's dir on Windows, I'll see hello world.java, which is the one we're looking for. All right, so what's the next instruction? OK, so we open. The terminal window there. OK, now to compile the Java source file into a class file, which is an executable or runnable in Java, uh, we're going to use the Java C uh, command and then uh, put our Java source file. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's see, hello world. And if I hit tab here on Windows and on Mac or Linux, it should finish it for me. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that since we're at the file system. So hello world.java is what we want. So then I'll hit enter here, and it'll compile. Now it just returns. If there was something wrong, it would give us an error. OK, so then what's the next instruction? Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that first, just to see. All right, so when we do ls now, we see here's our Java, and here's our class file. So that's exactly what we wanted. OK, so now the next instruction is to run this Java class file with this command, Java and hello world. Remember the case, uppercase H, uppercase W. Let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to hit tab again. And see, it tried to with tab, it tried to finish the um, file name for us. We don't use the dot when we're trying to execute the program. So we go ahead and backspace that out and then hit Enter. And you'll see that our string came out, hello, comma, world, exclamation point. So we actually successfully run had run this application. And here's the sample output, just as we got. And we'll learn more about running Java applications later. They get a tiny bit more complex than this, not much. Um, a little bit more to learn about running them, but uh, we'll keep it simple for now. And the nice thing about running Visual Studio Code with the Java extension pack is we don't always have to open the terminal window. So let's go ahead and do that, because that's a little bit easier. And then when we actually really want to run our Java application, then we'll go through the trouble of opening a terminal window. So let's learn how to do this in Visual Studio Code now. So I'm going to go back to Visual Studio Code. And you'll notice when we finish typing out this line here, um, 
Visual Studio Code gave us these options up above. One's for run, and that's to run it. One's to debug. Now, I usually do debug because I sometimes debug the application, so I just always run debug here. And let's go ahead and click on that here. And it will compile in this terminal output here. So it compiles it for us. And I have a breakpoint set from before. So I'm just going to close that, and we'll learn about that again after. If I do have a breakpoint, then this play button up on top will do it for me. So I'm just going to click that. And here's our output, hello world. So let's go ahead and run that again um, without debug on. And I'll click. And it's going to run it again. So there's hello world. So let's go ahead and do it with debug again so that we see what it does. So you'll notice over here by the numbers, if you uh, move your mouse, a little dim uh, red dot appears. So let's, and it'll do it on uh, code that's executable. So let's do it on line three. And then the dot gets brighter. So now if we debug again, it stops right here, and we can inspect certain things. Um, we don't have much to inspect here. We can see our args by hovering over it, and it's empty, so there's really nothing in it. Um, but when we get more complex, we'll see how to do that. Um, but this is debugging an application, so we run that, and we get Hello World again. And you can just hit Run. Even if we have a breakpoint, it'll just go ahead and run and ignore our breakpoint. It cleared the terminal window, and then it went ahead and ran our application. And that's running it in the terminal. Uh, window of Visual Studio Code, uh, so we don't have to open the terminal window in Windows, Linux, or Mac OS. And that's the end of our lesson. Thanks for watching.